Hello again. I uh, just thought I'd do the review in the car, whatever have you. Anyway, what are you my keys for? Just put them on. Alright, so, all this jangling sound keeps. It's like, why am I holding this? Ah! Let's put it down. It's distracting. Anyway. So, yeah, uh, I've done the movie reviews, those are done. So, I just thought, just do the review here. It's better to just go all the way home to do a, to do a review. It's like, sunlight, just do it now. It's fine. Anyway, this is a book review, despite being in the car. Uh, Eyes of the Mind. Anyone see the Maze Runner? This is by the same person. So, yeah. Eyes of the Mind, I believe is what the book title is. And it's one of a series, apparently. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, I read, I, I can read 100 pages in a, in, in a day, so it's 300 pages, so three days later I finished the darn thing. That's not 100 committed reading, by the way. Trust me, I could probably finish it in one if I did nothing else. But, you know, I don't really have time to just do nothing else and uh, go and just, you know, do things so uh, and read. So, uh, Eyes of the Mind. It's a futuristic mystery? Uh, sort of. I'm looking for uh, uh, virtual love. It's basically what the, the, the types I'm looking for. You know, you have the internet and you have romance and stuff in, thrown in. You know, uh, so someone at the... Uh, vi uh, uh, library managed to help me get a bunch of books, and the books I grabbed, one of the books I grabbed, was Eyes of the Mind. And it seemed kind of interesting, I thought, why not give it a shot? It might be vaguely interesting. But what do you know, it was vaguely interesting. Uh, how to explain this? Okay, it's a slightly overpopulated future, and... Uh, this kid named... Jack, I think it was Jack or something like that. Anyway, he's just an average kid. He has rich parents, so he's afford to have the best VR immer full immersion technology <laughs> in the world. So he gets top of the line, state of the art, and he has three best friends, Sarah and John. And they never met in person. They've only met online. They're not top tier the best, but they are like maybe in the top 100 or top 10 or something like that of ranking of uh, available uh, uh, fighters and uh, VR hackers and smart smarty people, you know. So um, it's called Lifeblood Deep, I believe it's called, is the name of the immersion and. The point is to get points in order to get to the next level. And there are AIs, but apparently AIs have grown so advanced that once they reach a point, they have to be decommissioned because they start to go nuts. Because it's like a mind that cannot be contained by a brain anymore. So they start wigging out. And they corrupt, degrade, and kind of go nuts, basically. So they have to be put down before it... It gets too far, then they kind of become a danger to themselves and others. Um, so, it's a bit, fair bit of background you have to know. And I kind of knew that this was by the same person as the Maze Runner, so I knew a lot of this stuff. At times I really wish I could swear on the internet, that just makes my emotions a little bit better. But I can only do that in private, so... Yeah, a lot of censoring. Lots and lots of censoring. Anyway, so I knew that a lot of elements would have to be created in order to pay off other elements. In a story, you don't do that! Trust me, I know I used to do it. A lot. Until someone, my good friend Ken, told me not to because I didn't know not to do that. Trust me, I can tell in stories of what a good story is. So having to create elements and then create other elements in order to pay off the first elements off is really annoying. It's like, you just made that up, you know, in order to 
pay off this thing. So you didn't really give that second part any thought, did you? You just threw that in there as a quick answer. Quick, simple answer. Yeah. So... There, there's, there's no real shock to this. It's more just standard, like, surprise! You know? It's like, really? I so did not see that coming. So trust me, there's no real surprise here. Okay, uh, half a surprise. Let's give it, give it that half a surprise. The rest of it is just pure made-up stuff that... People have kind of already done, so there's no real point in, in using it. It's become a trope at this point. You know. So. <sighs> Jack basically gets um, told. I don't know who the hell tells him this, but somehow the book opens up with Jack trying to save a girl from jumping off a bridge. And... Uh, it's a lot of info dump during the scene, which is good because uh, it establishes... It's a good intro, basically, for the world because they have to interest the thing. You can't do that. Like, and I'm going to reach into my... Scratch out my brain and remove my core. Therefore, my brain cannot tell the difference between virtual world and reality. Thus, I'll die when I actually die here. Which means my brain will actually think I'm dead, so therefore it will tell my body to die. He's like, you can't do that. And it's like, and you just did that. You, but you're not supposed to do that. Uh... Yeah, okay, uh, dang, she just did that. Uh, uh, please do not do that. Okay, what? Okay, I will, I'm telling you, I'm begging you here. Look, I will forfeit the points to please convince you to not do that. And in the end, they both fall off the bridge. And it's a good scene. The whole scene there is really, really good. It establishes everything. It seems... It has heart to it. You know, the, the still moment where he's screaming for his life. He looks at her and she sees, he sees this complete calm. And he says, and something deep down inside of him broke. That would be your heart, kid. And... It hits the water, momentary pain. Then he wakes up. And then they discuss about this coffin and his world. And he says, oh yeah, and he looks out the window and sees lifeblood deep in uh, red letters, you know, as advertisement for the whole thing. <sighs> and so, uh, he talks to his friends a bit, and he gets kidnapped by the government agents. The government agents tell him that there's a guy named Kane. Oh, no, no, sorry, the jumper info dumps a lot to him and the audience about how there's a guy named Kane. She's not going to be his guinea pig anymore. And she's ending this. Like, I am out. I'm going to kill myself because that's the only fucking way out of this nightmare that I'm st he stuck me in. And so, government guys come kidnap Jack. Jack is uh, given the mission by some higher up scary lady to uh, find Kane. Uh, find out what the mortality doctrine is, and where the hell this mortality doctrine is. Once he does that, they'll come in and they'll rescue him, or stop Kane, or whatever. So, yeah, so, a lot of stuff starts happening. Uh, uh, the kids band together, they, they f basically go through the steps of how to find, uh, uh, knowledge they need to find. So they go through this whole song and dance thing, getting information, breaking into almost seemingly impregnable places, the black and blue club, because if you try to get in illegally, you get beaten up. And so... Uh, be, I'm going to talk to this, the story as a whole, because like, going through this thing which is going to take forever. I only have like nine minutes left on this. Or, or no. I have... Uh, I, I, I don't know, I, I said I had like 20 minutes left on this thing, so I have like another 10 minutes left. Anyway, so, basically as a whole, the story structure leads up well of them eventually finding Kane and his stuff. The worlds are, they have to go through multiple worlds to get there, that's their firewall. Or whatever to get through, and they're able to tune themselves into the code in order to 
understand it, manipulate it, and bring things in from other games. I don't know exactly how that works, but it's some sort of meditation type thing where they go into like, like, okay, let me be honest here. They're stealing from the Matrix! There, I said it. It's annoying when you feel like they're stealing from the Matrix. It's a neat little trick what they're doing, but you kind of have to explain this a little bit more. You can't just say, and they take it from another game. Like, how? How did they do that? And they kind of explain it a little bit, but not very much. They're kind of vague about it. So it's like, whatever. So, after immense struggle, like, it's more of a psychological uh, test than anything else they go through. But they go through this whole thing. He's the last one to survive. He gets down there, do this whole thing. And then in the end finds out, well, you are the person we were looking for the entire time. The person we're looking for is you. So, so that's what you're that you're that stupid voice they kept hearing saying, I'm doing a good job. It's like, why will you be why were you cheering me on? That doesn't make any sense. We're trying to stop you. And he says, No, you're proving me right this entire time. My plan is for AIs to finally have human hosts so that we can finally live and be equals with the humans. And that's his big diabolical plan. Because the person has to kind of die first. Anyway. But he kept saying at the end of the, of the of the book, he kept saying, but you're that person we're looking for. You're my, you're my, you keep proving me right. Your, your struggle, your determination, your, your perfectly manageable self. You know, you keep proving me right. And he kept saying, what the hell is he talking about? So the whole thing collapses. He wakes up, comes out of his coffin, he stretches like, well, well, I'm glad that's over. I'm pretty sure the the government people will be able to clear it up and track him down, you know, for this plan. I mean, this castle thing he, he had is all destroyed. Uh, so I'm pretty sure this is, you know, kind of over-ish, a little bit. Oh, oh, darn it. Stupid lamp and nightstand. Wait, when do I have a lamp? When do I have wood floors? That doesn't make any sense. My floor was carpeted. Where's the light switch? Well, whose apartment is this? This isn't my apartment. And he's realizing, whose body is this? Apparently it was some other guy's who was killed off and he had his mind stuffed in him because, shocker on Shock Street, he's an AI! Not really that much of a, of a shocker if you read the story. You know, it's a bit out there, but not by much. <sighs> you know, he, what was it? Him, him being an AI is not that much of a shock compared to what was it I had in my head? It was um. What's it stealing from? It's stealing from the ninth, no, thirteenth floor. Thirteenth floor. That's what it was. It's like kind of saw it coming. It, it's like no, no, not, that's what I was. No, <sighs> I can't keep it all straight in my head. Uh, Kane's an AI that I got from early on because of his badass skills. So it's like kind of saw that coming. Him being an AI. Um, a shocker that it was a psychological test they went through. Not a, so much a barrier to deter people, but a test. Kind of saw that coming. Because it's like, this is more of a test, guys. Yes, I've seen Harry Potter. I know what this is. Um, and, um, so him being an AI, not that much of a thing. Because they, they keep they giving these things near the end. It's like, shocker, shocker, shocker. And it's like, not really. It's the virtual world, you know. And they kind of say, how the line between reality and, and virtual reality be blurred forever. So you kind of expect the unexpected. So him turning out to be an AI is a bit of a twist, but not that realm of incredibly shocking. It's surprising, but not shocking, because we kind of already expect it. Because it's a virtual reality book. So of course the Twilight Zone ending is of course going to happen. You're waiting for the alt the last shock it's like 
we know they're coming. There's going to be a couple of them. So we're going to know. Oh, wait. Yep. Yep. Oh, wait. There has to be. There probably has to be one more before the book ends. And when you know it, there was one more. It tried to be the biggest shock of all, but not really. And it kind of doesn't make sense. And that's when it feels more like the writer of Maze Runner, because it feels like they have their AIs live human lives complete with everything. Emotions, pain, suffering, joy, needing to eat, going to school, having uh, hardships, parents. And I'm thinking to myself, why? Why do your AIs need all this? An exact duplicate of a human life so they be lifelike? But for what purpose? I don't understand. But I kept wondering back at the beginning, like, why was he given that simple task to stop somebody from jumping off a bridge? Like, and if that's it, you're just given orders and, and you follow them out, but you're not told you're an AI? Or was he starting to degrade and he just forgot that he's an AI kid? That doesn't make any sense. You know, it's... It seems incredibly ridiculously unnecessary in order for it to work. For the surprise. That's why it feels illogical. It's like, how's that a surprise? It doesn't make any sense. You know. So, yeah. It feels more like an afterthought of him being an AI in order to have a shock value. I know, right? Maze Runner. So... So it sets it up for the sequel that now he has to learn who this guy is in order to keep acting like him for a little while so that doesn't cause a, a problem to get back with his friends because he says, yeah, his friends are real. Uh, and when he, when he's in love with Sarah. So uh, he has to get in touch with them and then find out the next step of what Kane's problem is because he said he was going to meet him. And because he was the first success. So he's important to a lot of people, especially Especially now. So both sides find him incredibly valuable. So I'm going to see about getting that book in the library. Just to, just curiosity to see, you know, how it's all going to end. And does it end well? Because I like to know how things end. I hate not knowing how things end. It's a thing I've always, always had. So... That was Eyes of the Mind. If you like the Mind Runner, then you'll like this. That's all I have to say. It, I like the virtual world. I like the concepts of what it provides. I do not... Like it says, you know, just a wave off. It, it, we just do that. You know, it says, and we pull stuff off from our games like how like a bit more of how you do these little tricks in the virtual world that you do everything else feels pretty um like realistic and plausible of what you can do you know the the places the locations how certain societies work how certain virtual reality concepts work those are good those are good you know no 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 argument there um how society views the virtual world and uses it for that feels real the concept of how they immerse themselves feels real. Um, as opposed to, you know, uh, sort out online, that feels a bit improbable. You just put the hat on and it just takes you in as opposed to the Matrix. That's a bit more probable. Um, so this feels, this has like a, a, a needle puncture to each nerve ending type of thing. So you really feel what's going on. That feels a bit more realistic. A bit more... Not implausible, but like inefficient, sort of, in like complexity. But it feels a lot more realistic. That it would have to go that way in order to really get the full immersion process. Um, you know, it seems a bit overly complicated for this process, but it would have to be that in order to actually get every single sensation right. Uh... Jack's character feels fine. He feels... It honestly feels like they were writing a real kid this entire time until the end just to make... just to have a shock value. To make it... You know, what a twist! Now, the story is much more interesting now. 
but then it doesn't make sense for the earlier parts of the story. So this feels like a really big afterthought, um, you know, after the fact and everything. That's when you got towards the end of this whole thing. And that's what really drags it down with these shock values. You know, and... That, that's about it. Everything else feels fine. Uh, the characters are well-rounded. You know, they're their standard types. The mother... Uh, the, the, the abrasive friend who constantly keeps doing all the dirty jokes. The bravado, the empty, the cowardice bravado, you know, um, but still sticks with, loyal enough to stick with them and still adventure enough, to, enough to stick with them and do the right things without too much hesitation. Um, and still smart enough 